Hi, welcome to Unlock Layout and Design and today we'll discuss about LDO which is Load Dropout Regulator. Let's look into the contents. Uh, so first of all, let's uh, try to understand wha what is a voltage regulator. Okay, that is your introduction. So then we will look into what are the different types of regulators. Okay. After that, we will compare what is uh, the difference between LDO and DC-DC converter. Then we will uh, explain the block diagram of a LDO, like what blocks it has, what uh, components it has. Then we will look into the working of the LDO, PMOS LDO. Then we will look into NMOS LDO working and we will compare NMOS and PMOS LDO. Okay, so what is a voltage regulator? Okay, first of all, so we must understand that a voltage regulator is nothing but a power supply. Okay, it is a power supply. So we have seen this kind of a regulated DC power supply while working in our labs, right? So it will have some voltage rating, correct? So it has currently, if you see here, it's around 13 volts, 13.6 volts, something like that. And basically, it also comes with a current rating. Say it says 10 amps. Suppose say we all know that a voltage source, how do we represent? We represent it like this, correct? So we say plus minus and we'll say say 2 volts DC supply. So but then this uh, actual power supply cannot give any amount of current, correct? So 2 volts it will maintain across its terminals, okay? But it cannot uh, uh, supply infinite current. So it will also come with a current rating, say 10 amps or 2 amps or 1 amp something like that okay so similarly our voltage regulator is a output voltage it will provide a voltage and it also comes with a current rating okay that means how much maximum current i can draw from that power supply okay so ideal voltage source can give infinite current but practical current so voltage sources cannot provide infinite current. So they will come with a voltage number and when it maintains that voltage, it can provide maximum current that is also provided. Okay, let's try to understand what is the need for a voltage regulator first of all. Okay, we know in our mobile phone, we'll have like a battery, which, we, which is a rechargeable battery. Okay, so it will be when you have charged it will be like 100 percent and when you use it then the battery will discharge and you'll have only so much say 10 percent charge okay but then in your mobile phone you will have like a processor right you'll have like qualcomm a snapdragon or a helios a mediatek processor some processor you'll have and that processor will need a power supply which is like 2.5 volt which should always be constant it always needs a 2.5 volt constant power supply but this battery when you charge it will be like 100 percent charge it will be like 5 volt okay and when you when it is only 10 percent that time it will be only 2.8 volt okay so now but this uh, the processor always needs 2.5 volt so here this is my regulated output voltage so now my input voltage which is the battery voltage how much ever it changes say so this is my v bat okay v bat means battery voltage i will put a regulator in between what it will give output voltage v out will always be like 2.5 volt this v bat will change from 5 volt to 2.8 volt depending on the how much charge it is there so this is what is shown here battery voltage ex example lithium ion battery voltage when it is fully charged it is 5 volt and then as and when you use the charge it will come down as low as 2.8 volt whereas this one is the regulated output voltage v out which is always like 2.5 volt okay so a regulator is that circuit this is the regulator circuit okay so regulator circuit will uh, absorb all these changes and give a constant output voltage say 2.5 volt okay let's try to understand we understood what is a regulator now we will try to understand what are the different types of regulators 
So, regulators are broadly classified into linear regulator and switching regulator. Okay. Linear regulator, it will not have any clock. Okay. It won't be switched. Whereas, this uh, switching regulator will have a clock and it will be periodically switched. Okay. So, in this linear regulator, again you have what is known as, I will call it as a classical linear regulator and another one which is a LDO, low dropout regulator. Okay, what is dropout voltage? We will look at that in a minute. Okay, and then based on the pass element, this LDO can have two types. It can have what is pass element? We will see that one in a minute. So, based on the PMOS pass element, there can be one type of LDO, and the pass element can be NMOS pass element. Okay, and these regulators can have on chip capacitor. Okay. So, when you have on chip capacitor, it is also called as capless because externally I am not using any capacitor, whatever capacitor is there on chip that only I will use, okay, small capacitor on chip and there is something called as external cap which is a normal LDO which is a with external capacitor like 1 microfarad, 4.7 microfarad, something like that. So, this is about linear uh, regulators this side, okay. So, similarly, we also have in switching regulator, there are two types. Okay, one is called as charge pump, and another one is called as inductor based DC to DC converter. So this charge pump will not have an inductor. Okay, it will have what is known as the fly cap. It will use only capacitors, and that's how it will um, uh, change the. It will regulate the voltage. Inductor based, we have a inductor and a capacitor based filter. So, LC filter will have that is why it is called as inductor based DC DC converter. So, in charge pump we have again two different types one is like a inverter suppose I give 2 volt I will give uh, output voltage will be minus 2 volt or it can be doubler also like 2 volt I will give I will get 4 volt ok. And in this uh, inductor based DC DC you have different control mechanism based on that you have different types of inductor based DC DC converter one is called as voltage mode converter ok. These are all like compensation schemes or method of control based on that. Other one is called as current mode control or peak current mode control. Another one is called as hysteretic mode and another one is called as constant on time COT or constant off time based control. So, these are different control schemes based on that you have different types of inductor based DC DC converter ok. So, this is about switching regulator which we will not discuss. We will discuss only about this LDO in this video. And there is something known as buck and boost. Buck means V out is, buck is V out is less than V in. Boost means you are actually boosting it. V out is greater than V in. So, if you say doubler, it is like V out is greater than V in. So, that is a boost converter. Okay. And there is something also known as isolated and non-isolated converters, okay, regulators, okay. So, this isolated, non-isolated, I have can, uh, explained it in another video, yeah, AG and D, DG and D and uh, well, there is one more uh, video, so and isolation, okay. In that video, I have explained about what is isolation, please go through that one. So, this, this is a broad classification of regulators, okay. So, in this, we will discuss only about LDOs. Okay, let us uh, try to understand what is the difference between LDO and switching regulator. We understood that there are two types of regulators. Then why we need two types of re uh, regulators? Why not do with only LDO or why not uh, use only switching regulator? So, well, let us try to understand. So, the output of a LDO is a clean DC means output voltage will be something like this constant a 2.5 volt. Okay. Whereas, switching regulator what will happen is because there is like constant switching in that there will be small voltage ripple like this, okay. Say so it could be like of uh, uh, say 1 millivolt, 5 millivolt kind of uh, ripple which will always be there, okay. That is, it is not desired actually but it will always be there, okay. So, that is your switching regulator basic difference, okay. Then V in minus V out is less, okay. So, LDO is always used generally when V in minus V out is less. Suppose say V in is 2.8 output is 2.5. So, in such case of uh, cases we will use like LDO and uh, V in minus V out can generally be higher. It can be used when it is less also 
but when v in minus v out is high generally it is used say v in is 5 volt v out is 1 volt or 0.8 volt so generally we will use for such kind of cases and load current can be very less or it can be very high say load current can be 1 milliamp 10 milliamp okay or it can be very high like 1 amp 2 amp kind of applications but generally here it will be like high say 500 milliamp 1 amp 2 amp kind of application generally this will be higher okay and what happens to the efficiency so the efficiency is high only when v in minus v out is less if v in minus v out is uh, higher the efficiency is very less so ldo will generally be used when high currents are there only when v in minus v out is less here efficiency is very high v in minus v out is more also no problem okay so the big difference between v in and v out still the efficiency will be greater than 90 percent generally so it can be as high as 95 98 kind of efficiencies at some particular load okay and what about uh, the other advantage of ldo it is very simple in architecture and very low very low noise okay i told you the output is very clean dc okay output voltage has ripple which will create some noise especially if it is like audio application it can create a lot of noise then uh, for a ldo it's very simple and it uh, it will need only one or two of chip capacitors okay but this will need an inductor, it will need a capacitor and sometimes even for compensation it needs some external components. So that way it has more components and it is costly, it is also costly. And here because there is no inductor, there is no EMI, okay. So here there is EMI possible because there is an inductor and lot of switching is happening. So EMI is also possible, many times this EMI is a uh, concern which will be addressed in the design. So these are the differences between LDO and switching regulator. Okay. So let us try to understand what are the sub uh, components or sub modules or sub blocks of a PMOS uh, LDO. Okay. So this uh, element, this transistor over here, okay. so this is called as pass element. Okay, so it will just pass the load current, whatever is the load current. Load means load current only, okay, how much ever the load current. I told you, V out will have some voltage rating, say 2.5 volt, and it will also have some 0 to say 100 milliamps, okay, this is the maximum current. So during this entire 0 to 100 milliamps, output is constant at 2.5 volt. So this entire 100 milliamps, whatever is there, that will come through this element. So it passes that current, that is why it is called as pass element, okay. Then we have what is known as the resistor divider. We will feed back a portion of the output voltage because our reference can be say 1.25 volt and output is 2.5 volt. So I will use R and R, both of them will be same. So that time I will get gain of 2 or feedback factor of half. Okay. So I will be uh, using this resistor divider here. So this is uh, required because V out and V in are not same okay so v ref is equal to v out into this rf2 divided by rf1 plus rf2 so v out into this is like a potential divider okay this rf2 divided by rf1 plus rf2 that should be equal to your reference because there is virtual ground between these two okay whatever is the voltage here the same voltage will come so that and this should be equal and from this we can work out what is V ref and if you know V ref and V out then we can work out RF1 and RF2. Okay. So this is your registered divider and the output needs to be like maintained at say 2.5 volt. So I need to compare it with some reference 1.25 double of exactly double of that. So I will need an error amplifier if this output voltage changes little bit this error amplifier will adjust in such a way that the output voltage comes back to 2.5 volt. That's why uh, this error amplifier is needed. This is your error amplifier. So this is the load cap. 
this one whatever you say this load cap this one i load i have shown here it can be like resistor it can be anything basically it will consume some current that's why a current source is shown this is actually a variable current source okay so it can be replaced by a resistor also or some capacitors also something like that or it can be some anything okay so anything that consumes some current so that is your v output load this is the load there can be some compensation like we may have some uh, rc in between this okay so uh, some uh, introducing some zero or miller compensation or pole zero tracking something like that so this compensation also can be there okay compensation for stability when this is a negative feedback loop it should be always stable for that we may use some compensation this compensation can be a capacitor generally a capacitor it can be a combination of capacitor and resistor or it can be a resistor in the form of mass capacitor plus mass resistor okay and sometimes you may see some cap like this also across this one that is also for compensation only feed forward compensation so basically what is what all uh, sub blocks we have we have error amplifier okay we'll have some compensation we have pass element we have resistor divider okay and then we have the load capacitor sometimes we'll also have a input filter capacitor just like this okay generally these are like off chip this register divider and everything else will be on chip okay let's try to understand the working of ldo okay so for our example we'll try to uh, think that uh, v in is uh, 3.3 volt v out that we want is 2.5 volt and v ref is 1.25 volt okay so we need to understand ldo working in two aspects one is the output voltage v out how how do we get uh, 2.5 volt second one is the load current whenever load current changes within the range see i told you the load current will be like 0 to 100 milliamps something like that so how will it provide 2.5 volt or how will it supply 0 to 100 milliamps whatever is the load current so first we'll, let's look into how do we get 2.5 volt this is a crude way but uh, we will still go with this okay so i want 2.5 this 1.25 because there is a loop here it's a negative feedback loop we'll understand that in a while uh, because of this being in a loop what will be this op amp this node voltage will be like it is a virtual ground so whatever is at the vref same voltage i will get here okay 1.25 volt so how do what is the equation for v out if i know the voltage across this if i know the voltage across this v r2 and v r1 so what is v out v out is nothing but v r2 plus v r1 okay so plus minus plus minus what is the current that is flowing here the same current will flow through rf2 as well we know this voltage which is nothing but v r2 v r2 because of the virtual ground it is the same potential here so it is nothing but 1.25 volt what is i i is nothing but v r2 divided by r2 let's assume both the resistors as 100 k okay so v r2 divided by uh, 100 k which is nothing but 1.25 volt divided by 100 k i will not simplify this now i have to find out what is v r1 v r1 i will find out by like 100 k i know the resistance i know the current i know this current i know the resistance so i into r drop will give me the voltage across v r1 so v r1 is nothing but i into r which is nothing but i is nothing but 1.25 volt divided by 100 k into the resistance resistance is same rf1 is same so that is also 100 k so this will cancel and again i will get back 1.25 volt so v r2 is 
1.25 volt and VR1 is also 1.25 volt. What will be this voltage? V out. So V out is 1.25 plus 1.25, which is nothing but 2.5 volt, whatever we needed. Okay. So because of the loop, the way it works, because of this virtual ground, I will get my V out. V out is set this way. Now let's try to understand the second aspect of uh, LDO working, which is the load current. So this uh, regulator should be able to provide different load currents, say 1 milliamp, 10 milliamp, or 100 milliamps, whatever. Okay. So now currently, I uh, let's assume that the load current, this is the load current, uh, that is being drawn is 1 milliamp. So how will this 1 milliamp come from this power supply? So we know that this is the pass element. Pass element will you raise it will pass the current which is 1 milliamp so if this pmos transistor has to provide that current it needs some vgs okay say let's assume the vgs currently is 1 volt so what will be this voltage is 3.3 minus 1 volt so this will be 2.3 volt the op amp output will be 2.3 volt so that way i will get vgs of 1 volt which will supply 1 milliamp of load current now suddenly if this load current increases to 10 milliamps okay so then what should happen so id equation we know this is a pmos transistor okay id is half mu p cox w by l vgs minus vth whole square so this id is proportional to vgs square okay vgs minus vth square so now when current increases so obviously vgs should increase because all other things are constant vth is also constant wil is constant cox is constant mu p is constant half is constant so the only way the current can increase is by increasing vgs so now instead of one volt vgs so let's assume the vgs should become like two volt okay if it becomes 2 volt then what will happen the voltage will the current will uh, increase to 10 million so but but suddenly it will not happen okay so whenever suddenly the load current increases from 1 milliamp to 10 milliamp what will happen to the output voltage the output voltage will fall because it doesn't have so much of current the current will be taken from the capacitor so this output voltage will fall so whenever this output voltage falls v out into r2 divided by r1 plus r2 if this is 2.5 this will normally be 1.25 volt this assuming 50 percent okay so this voltage will fall slightly it will reduce so whenever this voltage falls what happens to this voltage this also will fall so what happens to the error error will increase so if the node voltage here increases or if this decreases same thing will happen here this voltage will also decrease if plus increases the output voltage will increase if plus whatever is the voltage at plus if that decreases this voltage also will decrease so when this voltage decreases what happens to the vgs vgs will increase okay so that when vgs increases so if vgs is increasing the current will also increase so now it will be able to supply 10 million. Okay. So this is how the loop works. Now suddenly it is giving like 10 milliamp. Suddenly the output uh, current will decrease. Say the load current will decrease. So this continues to give 10 milliamp and it will go and charge this capacitor. So this output voltage will slightly increase. The moment this voltage increases, what happens to this plus voltage? It will also increase so what happens to the gate voltage gate voltage increases and then vgs will decrease so when vgs will decrease what happens to id id will decrease and that's how it will regulate the load current so whenever there is a demand for more current what the loop will act in such a way that the gate voltage will reduce and uh, that will enhance the gate voltage and that's how it will give more load current and whenever the load current decreases so what happens to the feedback loop it will work in such a way that the gate voltage will increase so that the vgs will decrease and hence the id 
will decrease. That's how it will regulate the load current. Hope this is clear. Okay. So let's try to understand uh, the NMOS LDO block diagram. So this is the pass element. This is the output filter capacitor. This is the feedback network and this is the error amplifier and I am giving a negative feedback here. Okay. So I am connecting the feedback to the negative terminal. But if you had seen the PMOS pass element, the PMOS LDO, we were giving feedback to positive terminal of the op amp. So does that mean that this is a positive feedback? No. It is still negative feedback and why we are doing it this way here, I will explain it in a minute. So we know this, this pass element, we are giving input at gate and taking the output at source. So it is nothing but gate is the input, source is the output. The configuration is common drain, common drain amplifier and there is no phase inversion. Okay, so there is no phase inversion. Whereas, if you see the PMOS pass element, we are giving input at gate and taking the output at drain. Okay, input at gate and give, taking the output at drain, which is a common source amplifier. Okay, so there is a phase inversion here. So it will provide 180 degree phase shift. So in order to counter this, what I do, I will give the feedback to positive terminal. So actually it is still a negative feedback, but because of the phase shift introduced by the pass element, I am giving the feedback to positive terminal. Whereas that is not required in the NMOS pass element because there is no um, uh, phase inversion created by the NMOS pass element. Hope this is clear. Okay. Now let's look into the working of a NMOS LDO. So how will this work? Okay. So it works very much the same way like a PMOS uh, LDO. Then why? Uh, what is the problem with NMOS LDO? Let's assume the output is 2.5 volt like before, and the supply is 3.3 volt, and the reference is 1.25 volt. Okay. Let's assume the threshold voltage of this NMOS transistor is 1 volt. Okay. Now this one is like output voltage or the source voltage of the pass element is 2.5 volt. What is the gate voltage? In order that this transistor is on, VGS must be minimum of threshold voltage which is 1 volt. VGS should be at least 1 volt. So now this voltage plus VGS will give my gate voltage. So 2.5 plus 1 volt should be 3.5 volt. Okay. So now this is a problem because I have supply voltage of only 3.35, 3 volts, but I need to drive this transistor with 3.5 volt. So this is a disadvantage. So how do I get this 3.5 volt? Okay. So there is no such supply, but there are techniques to generate this 3.5 volt. They will use what is known as a charge pump. Okay, so they will use a charge pump circuit which will enhance the voltage from 3.3 to say whatever required 3.5 or 3.6 or 3.8 whatever uh, let's assume it is like 3.8 volt because little more than 3.5. So let's assume we need 3.8 volt. So the charge pump will produce that 3.8 volt and that's how we can make this one work. Let's assume the input voltage, the output voltage is still 2.5 volt, reference is 1.25, and the supply is 5 volt. Okay, so now and VTH of this is 1 volt. So 2.5, what is the minimum VGS that is required? 2.5 plus 1 volt. So it is 3.5 volt. Now, do I need a charge pump? not required right because i have a supply voltage of 5 volt it can easily give me 3.5 or 3.8 whatever is required for this nmos pass element so there is absolutely no problem so in this case i don't need a charge pump whereas when the input voltage and the output voltage are closer that time i need a uh, charge pump in order to turn on this pass element mn okay 
Now let's try to understand the differences between PMOS and NMOS LDO. PMOS pass element will have a bigger size because mu p is smaller than mu n. Okay, by the factor of 2.5, it varies from process to process. So if mobility is less, so we know that ID is equal to half mu c o x w by l v g s minus v t h whole square. Now let's assume that all other quantities are constant. This is constant. These are constant. This mobility mu p and w by l. If for the same current, say 100 milliamps, okay. So now mu p and mu n, two things are there, and w by l is there. If mu p increases, w by l will reduce. Or if mu n, mu n is more then what, what will happen to the W by L? It will reduce. If mu P is less, then the W by L will increase. Okay. So mu P is lesser than mu N by our factor of 2.5, 2, 2.5. So that's how the size of the pass element will increase. So when pass element size increases, actually, there is a disadvantage. So when this PMOS pass element is there, the size increases, what happens to the parasitic cap? at the gate so that also will increase and when the capacitor increases what happens to the bandwidth or the speed the speed will decrease so hence the response will be slower in this case okay whereas n mass pass element it is a smaller in size okay and then because it is smaller in size the area required is also small here the area required is more which means cost is more here the area required is small that means cost is small okay but what is the disadvantage the disadvantage uh, here is we need a charge pump depending on the uh, difference between v in and v out here there is no need for charge pump okay but even if i put charge pump the area can still be small if the load current is bigger okay so put together still the area will be less so here as i told you because it will introduce a parasitic cap and the bandwidth is smaller the transient response is slower but here because the size is small the parasitics are less the transient is very very fast okay. the loop gain i told you about loop gain which is higher in uh, pmos and lesser in uh, nmos Let's uh, look into that one actually. So here, NMOS is a common. Sorry. NMOS is a common drain configuration. Okay. So what is the loop gain? Means the overall loop gain. So this gain, AV of the error amplifier, gain of this is the total gain and feedback will have a attenuation okay let's not worry about that so overall gain is nothing but the error amplifier gain plus the pass element gain okay i told you nmos is a common drain configuration in common drain the gain is at the max one 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 is the gain okay but you will not get anything greater than maximum you will get is like uh, say 0.99 something like that but max, that i can round it off to one so basically this is not providing any gain the gain is all all in the error amplifier whereas in a pmos pass element in this one this is a as i told you before this one is a common source amplifier it can give some gain say 20 30 something like that okay so it can give gain so obviously the gain will be higher in this it will be av of this plus the gain of common source av of error amplifier plus gain of common source stage so the gain is higher here so so that's what is uh, mentioned here lesser loop gain in nmos whereas higher loop gain in pmos okay okay let's understand what is known as the dropout voltage now that we have seen a lot of things 
will try to understand what is known as the dropout voltage. Basically, dropout voltage is nothing but uh, okay. So this is V in okay. This is V out okay. Whatever is the difference between this V in minus V out, I'll generally call this as the dropout voltage. Okay, so this is the dropout V in minus V out. Okay, so suppose say V in is say some 10 volt and V out is 3.3 volt. Okay, so then uh, what is the dropout? 10 minus 3.3, which is 6.7 volt. Okay, so that is the difference between V in and V out. Okay, but V out is always constant. So now I decrease the input voltage from 10 volt to 9 volt so then what happens to output voltage output voltage will still be 3.3 okay so it will maintain at 3.3 because that's the function of a regulator what is the dropout voltage dropout voltage reduced okay so basically that's the uh, v in minus v out okay so that is your uh, dropout uh, voltage okay. Okay, so if you see this uh, 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 diagram here, so the, we have to come reverse, okay, we have to come this way, we should not go this way, we should come this way. So what is plotted here is my input voltage, which is this, okay, I, I had 10 volt, then I came down to 9 volt, then I came down to 8 volt, and 7 volt, like so on okay but the output voltage is always constant at 3.3 volt okay so there comes one particular input voltage say here in this case it is 3.6 volt so instead of 10 now input is 3.6 volt and output is 3.3 volt what is the difference 3.6 minus 3.3 which is nothing but 0.3 or 300 millivolt okay so at this uh, point this this is actually how is the output voltage being maintained at 3.3 it is because of the negative feedback loop okay so at this uh, input voltage at 3.6 volt that is the limit i can push push it down okay from 10 volt to 3.6 volt below 3.6 volt this loop will not work this error amplifier loop will not work and i cannot guarantee you 3.3 volt output so this border voltage at which this loop stops working and the output is no more regulated at 3.3 volt that is known as the dropout voltage okay so here 3.6 in this regulator 3.6 is the dropout voltage okay so at this point when only 300 millivolt is the difference okay so that time what happens the output voltage is no more guaranteed at 3.3 if the input reduces below 3.6 output is not 3.3 it is going down okay it goes down when input comes to 2 volt okay the output is zero okay in this region it is not at all following the regulator it is not working like a regulator it is in the dropout region okay so input output will have some kind of linear uh, and below 2.0 uh, volts uh, so it is not at all working okay here it is working but it is not following the output voltage is not regulated 3.3 okay in this region and in this region which is the proper region of our working so output voltage is regulated at 3.3 here it is working but its output voltage is not regulated at 3.3 we call this one as dropout region okay so thanks for watching and uh, hope you like the video and it was informative uh, please do hit the like button if you have liked it and please don't forget to share and subscribe thank you